Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to look at NFTs. We're going to recap some of the charts on Ethereum, Cardano, Litecoin, and some of the smaller projects which we've been covering, such as TVK going nuts, Reef, and Injective Protocol. Now, I also am going to do uh, a bit of an analysis on how to look at the token metrics of an NFT. And basically, you can use this across any cryptocurrency so you can understand whether the project is potentially overvalued, undervalued, has it taken off, etc. So it's going to be very, very useful for any project that you are trying to research. So with that in mind, let's begin the video. First, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you find some value from the video. If you found any value from any of these videos, let me know in the comments down below your favorite parts and I can do more of those in the future. And uh, lastly, you can join me on Instagram as well. So check that out over there. Daily Q and A's, I'm getting back to you guys there. Plus you can check out my retirement fund portfolio. So let's dive into today's video. Yesterday we had a pretty banger, big banger video here. 20 N uh, 20X NFT hidden gems. You guys loved it. There was some good stuff in there and we have seen chilies dump from that point. Let's have a look at the Google Trends. Now today, stimulus checks are going nuts. And of course, if you haven't heard already, the main premise around that is that people believe stimulus checks are going to then pour into the market and continue to push the markets up because history has shown that has that is what has happened. So that's why we tend to look at history and it doesn't always occur like that. And sometimes the markets change their minds along the way, but the probabilities are in our favor that when stimulus checks get released, markets go up. With one thing in mind there, maybe the markets are preempting that and they are beginning to move up already. So they're the things we have to take into account. Uh, and then the same goes for when you guys are mentioning stuff about Litecoin being introduced to PayPal or Mimblewimble on Litecoin. This is all already in the market psyche. You already know about it. Someone watching a YouTube video just like myself. So if you believe that is going to have an effect on price, then why wouldn't you just buy it before the event occurs and wait for the event to see what happens? That is the way the markets work and they basically price in the news time and time again, which is why we refer to the charts as our main source of information. So at the moment, stimulus checks really well and truly up there. It looks like uh, the Biden presidency is going to give out some more stimulus checks. I think that's no surprise to anyone. Um, Ethereum struggling down in these lower uh, values down here. NFTs are well and truly up there. Everyone is still searching for this stuff and crypto. Everyone's still searching for crypto. It has calmed down over the last uh, few weeks around that top that we saw in February 20 to 23 when we got the dump. That was when everything was extremely, extremely popular. Now that we've seen Bitcoin surge to new all time highs again, these searches aren't as high. We're not seeing as high of a search on crypto or Ethereum at the moment. So I'm a little bit wary, but you know, market keeps going up. We can't buck the trend. The trend is up. It's just a matter of let's not bet all of our life savings in one hit at this point because we're in a runaway bull market. Fear and greed as well. We're still at 78, even though we're at all time highs. It's incredible. Last month, 92. This was leading up into that high of around $58,000 on Bitcoin and we were seeing the, the extreme greed at 92, whereas we're not seeing that now. So that could be seen as a good thing because we're not in that extreme greed phase yet where we lead up into a peak. We're just greedy, <laughs> just greedy at the moment, not extremely greedy. Let's have a look at the news, cover off some of these things first before we get into each of the uh, each of the coins that I'm looking at here at the top, Injective, Crypto.com, etc. I'm determined to do a video under 20 minutes for you guys. I know you're requesting those. So Alameda Research invests 20 million into Reef. You know we've looked at that uh, looked at Reef for the last few weeks, especially on that live stream where uh, KSI came onto the stream and was throwing down pounds left, right, and center to talk about Reef. I'm still not sure whether it's a scam or not. And you guys that get offended in the comments and say, how can you say that Reef is a scam? At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. All of these cryptocurrencies or the vast majority of them are probably going to go very close to zero after a massive boom and a bust. I'm not married to any of these, so I don't care calling it a scam or I'm calling it the next Bitcoin. Like it doesn't really matter. All I'm looking for here is there are some partnerships going on. There is some more investment coming into the space. In particular, we're concerned with Reef in this example because Reef is something that I like the look of. That's why I'm looking at it here. And you guys apparently also like the look of Reef. 
and it has shown up on the charts. We saw this as a very good swing setup, which I put over into the group, the Investor Accelerator. If you want to be a part of that, there's a link to that in the description down below. Discount is still on and the price will be increasing later this month. So if you want to get in before the price increase, check out that link. Uh, it's your Investor Accelerator. So we're looking at this in terms of swing charting it and it's set up pretty nicely. Okay, so 20 million in Reef really really nice and the investment will, uh, will reportedly allow reef to implement more cross-chain integrations with serum radium and solana which uh, there are a lot of fans for solana so big news coming over here these guys at 20 million have bought roughly 520 million at the current price of around that uh, three and a bit cents call it close to four cents and that has pushed the price up over the last couple of days on reef which we'll have a look at in the charts and it looked like this was coming in uh, the the charts moved up just before this news came out so you know the deal's been done at least that's what the chart looks like ethereum news ethereum creator vitalik buterin says a 100x boost in eth transaction throughput imminent now this news is a day old god forget god forbid but this is still important to cover let's keep it in mind it looks like uh, vitalik is really they are starting to push this thing through the main thing here is the narrative is shifting even more to Ethereum. I've talked about it last week, the week before. Cardano was the main narrative. That was the agenda. Let's get Cardano to the moon. It's died off from Cardano. Price is still okay, you know, sitting around that 95 cents, 97 cents to $1.15. So it's still showing its head, but Ethereum is really where it's at. And people are now starting to see, oh, maybe Ethereum 2.0 will be good. Maybe Cardano can't make it. Like just these are the sort of things that are going to come out so for the holders for us we just need to be aware of that and we can't be shaken out because of the news shift and uh, pretty much sort of the, the the newbies taking on board something because maybe some of the experienced youtubers and social media influencers are really pushing one agenda more than the other as opposed to just hey come in let's make some money from the space because at the end of the day it is a whole lot of speculation next piece MicroStrategy scoops up 262 Bitcoin. Treasury holds 91,000, an average of $24,000 per coin. So this is, uh, again, a couple of days ago, MicroStrategy has picked that up, 15 million. Just another thing to add to the basket. These guys, I mean, Michael Saylor, he is letting us know that he is still buying. Why? I don't know. Does he really need to let us know that he's only buying 15 million? Probably not, but maybe he's got other plans. Maybe it's to show other corporations, institutions in the space that he is really the man to come and talk to about this. And maybe he'll divert his business more towards cryptocurrencies because you know no one knew about his business before he started buying Bitcoin. Maybe he's better off suited to explaining digital currencies to corporations, just throwing out ideas out there. All right, let's talk some NFT stuff for a sec. Who is Beeple? Story behind world's most expensive digital art and non-fungible token. I'm only gonna spend a brief period on this. Basically, this is the JPEG file sells for 69 million. It's like 5,000, the first, every day is the first 5,000 days, put it into some sort of collage, 69 million, all right? Would you wanna pay that for it? Probably not, but this is just bringing more attention to the space built on Ethereum, more narrative towards Ethereum. Moving on. Public beta of IOTA. Now, I only bring this up because we've talked about IOTA on the channel before, and uh, it's it hasn't just taken off, and I'm wondering whether these are just those old cryptos from the 2017 days, the 2017 bull market, which are re still really struggling in this bull market, even though everything else has taken off. You know, we've seen DeFi, we've seen Oracles, we're now seeing NFTs, we're seeing the battle between Cardano and Ethereum and Binance and Polkadot. And these are the old smart contracts which are supposed to rival blockchain. IOTA is a tangle, so it's not a blockchain, it's a tangle. And nothing much is happening. We've seen a bit of a price increase. It's holding steady. It's broken above its uh, resistance levels, which we have checked on the charts previously. But I'm just keeping a little track of the news just to see if there is any real, uh, any real grounds being made here as opposed to just a hope on the chart that we get a push and, a, and then a dump. Novogratz accepts call with Hoskinson. So I'm bringing some of you the, the positive Cardano news here on why Cardano is not overvalued. So Novogratz, talking to Hoskinson. If you don't know Novogratz, CEO of Galaxy Digital, one of the biggest holders of cryptocurrency in general. 
So the CEO of Galaxy Digital reiterated that the current market cap of Cardano is way too high. Earlier this week, Mike Novogratz posted a tweet that caused a stir in the crypto and Cardano community. Novogratz, one of the most prominent Bitcoin bulls and CEO of Galaxy Digital, whose assets under management reached 1.2 billion at the end of February, questioned Cardano's use cases and why ADA has the fifth highest market cap. So last question before I go, Shower, can anyone make a real bull case for ADA? That's basically because nothing is really on Cardano at the moment. So we are living on a hope, dream, prayer that Hoskinson comes through, whereas Vitalik Buterin has created something and there is a lot being built on it already. So they just need to alter a few things. Sure, it's taken a hell of a lot of time, but all the infrastructure's there. They're basically you know, the leaders in the pack at the moment by a long way and they can just take off even further from this point, which I think is possibly what's going to happen with Ethereum uh, once they get this whole scaling thing sorted out and it's just going to shift and take a lot of the market se uh, segment away from Binance, possibly some Polkadot, most likely Polkadot, and Cardano as well. So it's going to sort of shift into these guys. Now, NFT, ancient NFT project called Mooncats is eating up Ethereum. NFT and gender is still out there. The narrative is still strong. It's important because if you want to be making some money in NFTs, you want to be, uh, you know, sort of trading them, then we've got to make sure that the news is still talking about it so that's still fresh in people's minds. Once it leaves their minds, prices tend to die. Think about Cardano. How much news do you see about Cardano out there anymore? I don't see very much of it and prices held steady, but it is trending down, whereas everyone thought it was going to $2.50 this month or $3 this month. Granted, we still have two weeks to go, so it could get there. We've seen Bitcoin hit 60,000, of course, but when it's not in the news, it's very hard for it to get some momentum. NFT, here we go again. Tennis player, never heard of her, maybe you have, is uh, auctioning off the this underside part of her arm so that you can tattoo something on there so that when she serves, it must be the right side, so when she serves, you'll see it every time. Not a bad thing to do, especially if you're a lower ranked tennis player to get some money on board. Hopefully, she puts a little bit of a, a cut there so that's a, you know some income that comes in every every time. You know, you, you post your NFT and maybe you have 0.01% of a you know an income source coming through. I don't know how she can work it out. Hopefully, it can become something like that. So let's have a look at coin market cap quickly. Bitcoin sitting at 61,278. We're nearly hitting 80,000 Aussie dollars for you Aussies who have asked, can you talk in Aussie dollars? Sometimes, but no, it's US dollars. Get used to using US dollars, unfortunately. Australian dollar is not the reserve currency in the world. The US dollar is and everything is denominated in US dollars. So get used to it. It makes life a hell of a lot easier. And then you can transition to different exchanges like the decentralized exchanges. And this goes for anyone that you that's using pounds or euro or something like that, which I know you guys probably do a lot more of, but the Aussies kind of get a little bit stuck when it comes to pricing things. Some of them, not all of them. I know, I know most of you guys do it in US dollars. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, 1900, uh, market cap 1.8 trillion. That pretty much finds us right at the top here. This is the highest we've ever been on the market cap. Uh, Binance reclaims third spot again. Cardano slips to fifth. Polkadot very, very close behind them and they still haven't had much news yet. So I think Polkadot's probably got some big things coming for them soon. It, it just seems like it's time in that rotation to get there. Now I'm gonna scoot on in a sec because I want to get this video done very quickly for you guys. Let's have a look at some of these projects. These are the things that we've talked about before. The main uh, narrative around these or the main agenda is they're gonna be in either DeFi, which has had a very big cooling off or their charts are looking pretty good or they're in NFTs. I just want to remember and remind people about these projects and where they are, where they're sitting at the moment. Pokestarter, big one. Dollar price tag was when we started looking at it. Had a nice looking chart moving up, spiked into around seven dollars, and uh, the exit for me was around six. So it's only sitting at around five now. So I, you know, if I want to get back into my position after taking profits, then I should probably do it soon. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit in the rest of what I have there and just let this ride. Now, I could be missing out on a lot. I get that. Um, but the market cap's at around 300 million. I think this could probably do a 10x if we get a nice strong bull market towards 
the middle of this year or later in this year as well if we get a bit of a cooling off period and then we take off again. A few months cooling off, a month cooling off, and then we take off again for another few months. This could probably do a 10x. You know, it's got the the buzzwords around it, getting onto Polkadot. It's the DeFi space. It's had a strong move already. People believe in it. It's, it's showing good signs and companies that are listing on PokerStarter are making their uh, their budgets or their goals to uh, basically they're basically just being funded on PokerStarter. So new startups are being funded on PokerStarter. They're hitting their targets and then they can go on and do what they need to with that money. Pretty much blow it at the casino by the looks of most of these projects. And uh, if you want to get it, Poloniex, uh, Uniswap, OKX is on here. Ho um, Huobi doesn't look like it's too good. Liquidity is not looking great here, but look, it's possible over there too. The main ones I use is Poloniex and Uniswap for it. OKX is also not bad, but just I've got two other options, so why not? So that's PokerStarter, still looking good. Market cap looks okay, 300 million. Uh, Reef is the big one that we want now. Just hit 100, hit the top 100, rank 100 right there. Uh, 4.69 cents. It still hasn't had its blow off tops yet, but we had a lot of volume on the 13th, which like we saw in the news, that it looked like they bought up the other that company that bought $20 million of Reef bought it on the 12th. So surprise, surprise, market price goes up. Huge volume. What is that volume? 662 million, which potentially a lot of it is wash trading. Like who is trading this thing for $700 million in volume a day when one of the biggest purchases there had 20 million? I don't know, could be completely off, but it just seems, seems a bit crazy. Uh, market cap, 534 million. So. We're starting to get up there and, and the risk down the risk to the downside is starting to get a little bit high compared to what the upside could be. Now we don't know what the upside is. Looking at some of these other projects that are hitting the top 20, they're sitting at around that $4 billion market cap. So let's scroll back here. Here we go, $4.7, $6 billion market cap. So if it was to get into this area, if Reef was to jump 10x, that's not too bad. I could I can live with a 10x, but I don't want to start getting any lower than that. Injective protocol looks like it's cooling off, cooling off a fair bit. And the market cap here is 180, call it 180 million. Still low. And this is one of those decentralized exchange projects from memory. Binance, Hoyobi, you guys correct me in the comments if I'm off with that, but that's why I remember getting into injective protocol. Looking very good. This is a nice cool off period for for injective, no one's talking about it again, or I haven't seen it. So my eyes are staying with injective to see if I can reload because this is a nice priced market cap, 180 million. Next, CRO. Now this is up there, but it's crossing some all-time highs. That's another good place again. And it wasn't too far since that that big peak. We've come back to around the price that we talked about in the video. The market cap is up there, 4.7 billion, but I think they're they're tackling a bigger market, so there is a lot more out there as well. This this could be. It's. I mean, it's, I don't think it's going to be a Binance, but maybe we get to half Binance's, and it gives us um, a lot more room to grow. So Binance say 40 billion, maybe this goes to 20 billion, 5 billion to 20 billion, three, four, whatever x, 20, 25 billion. Um, throughout this bull market. But I really love the use case of CRO. And you guys know I use the app. It's very useful. It's one of those products that works in crypto. So in the uh, description down below, you can also get your crypto debit card using that link, 25 US dollars when you stake some of their CRO token. Now, it doesn't look like I'm going to make it to this 20 minute mark for you guys, but we've got a lot to cover and hopefully you're finding some value from it. So if you are, leave a like down below. Let's get the video to 3000 likes. We're getting there, nearly there on a lot of these videos. TVK, we've talked about this a couple of times in the last week. What do you know? I have not been out, it can't be you guys pushing this price up. There has to be more than that because there is a volume of $60 million. If my audience is trading $60 million, well done to you guys, but I don't think it's gonna be us moving this thing. I think there's real other genuine interest in TVK out there. At 90 cents now, we're looking pretty good. We have a market cap of 82 million. This is one I really like the look of long term. I don't know if it's going to get to the Chili's level of getting to the four or five billion dollar market cap, but at 80 million, we only need to get half of that, and we've got ourselves 20x. We go 10x to you know eight, uh, seven, eight hundred million. Double that again to around that 1.5 billion. We're still 
pretty good. Like it's still a realistic target in these sorts of market markets. Fully diluted, 1 billion. Tokenomics looks like a lot of the coins are coming out later in the year. So that is the most critical thing about TVK. We don't want to be left in the project when these other coins are released, when the massive bags are released, because that could really push the market down. Yield app is a new one that I like. Now, the main thing here, and I need to get into that last part of the video because that was the really important part, but I want to share yield app with you. We're at $80 million market cap, fully diluted, still very low, $270 million. This is a new project which I, I like, and I want to talk to them to possibly work with them and talk about them more on the channel. So just giving you guys a heads up on that. The reason being is that using DeFi. So what they do here, web-based yield app looks to tackle DeFi's inherent complexity. Essentially, they are an app and you can buy the tokens, put some of your capital, your investment into the app, and then it searches for better yield, kind of like a YFI token, you in finance, but they're doing it in an app and it makes it so much easier to use. Now, if this is all true and they actually get it done, then that could be a huge game changer and I could see this doing into the billions in the market cap. So I like the look of that sort of thing, yield app, because playing with DeFi is a pain in the ass. Let's be real. It's just too much going on. There's a lot of numbers flying out everywhere. It's a pretty difficult thing for especially newbies, if not intermediate or advanced. So just some people just aren't interested, but they want to earn those really good interest rates. Yield app is trying to solve that problem. We ha they haven't done it yet. That's why the market cap is still low. And we're taking the risk if we purchase it to hope that they get that problem solved. If they don't, too bad, everything's lost. If they do, massive gains, risk versus reward. So in time, I'm sure I'll be talking about this a little bit more because I, I like that they're trying to solve that issue and it's a great return on your money. You've got your app, it's kind of like the CRO style of thing where you put your money on there and you earn an interest, which is your passive income. So that's something else I look at on the channel is like once you have your gains, what are you going to do with those? Are you going to rotate them into stock portfolios, into real estate? You're just going to buy something and then never come back to investing again? Do you want to make a passive income for yourself? That's the sort of stuff we talk about in the Investor Accelerator, which I've mentioned is down below. The course is down there. So go and check that out. All right. Last thing. This is it. This is how I'm doing the numbers on uh, this is the tokenomics of projects so you can understand whether it's good or not. Now this one came up a lot, Ecomi, when I talked about NFTs yesterday. And I thought, all right, I'm gonna dig into one of these projects. You guys were commenting on it a lot. Most of the time, people comment on them and these projects have just flown to the to, to, to Mars. And I'm like, what was the point of that? Like there's, there's no value in this to anyone else. But if you're holding your bags from a cheap price, sure, keep pumping your bags. So Ecomi, what I'm doing here is having a look at the site. Great, looks good, secure wallet. This stuff all sort of checks out. You can read about this. I didn't want to go into this one so much, but I want to look at the tokenomics, which is right here, token distribution allocation, which I found on their website. It's gone to the top, uh, token metrics up here. So that's their tokenomics. It opens up a Medium article. I scrolled down, token distribution. Uh, I did this here, had a look at what their pre-sale was. And that was, they, they got, uh, Bitcoin was at six to seven thousand. They had a hard cap raise of fifteen hundred Bitcoin. So fifteen hundred multiplied by there goes my face. Um, six. Let's call it seven thousand US dollars. Ten million dollars. So their hard cap was ten million. That's pretty fair. Pretty fair for an ICO. All right. That's the first thing. Now, where are their coins? Their coins are here, coins in circulation, sold during the sale, 110 billion. I looked at CoinGecko and they tell me that there is a, a supply of 750 billion, getting close to a trillion of these coins. And it's one of those things that's like, wow, look how cheap this thing is. If I own a million of these, which you could probably get for a thousand bucks, I don't know. Then if this goes to a dollar, you know the story, right? If it goes to a dollar, I could be a millionaire. It's nonsense. You need to understand the the, the price, the coin price multiplied by the supply and that gives you the market cap which they're not showing us because no one knows how much supply is on the market for e which is why I don't think it's a, a great project yet. It looks really good but this doesn't stack up and this is just quick numbers. So what's on the market? Tokens are circulating 110 billion plus 
Vault Wallet, 40 billion added for initial liquidity. So that's to give some liquidity out in the marketplace. Business development and long-term initiatives, this isn't out on the market. So they're holding that and then they'll start to drip some out. Team advisors, board members, I doubt this is out on the market because they would be holding that until the price goes up. Reserve wallet, I doubt that's on the market either. So that gives us 40, 110 is 150. 150 billion coins are out on the market and the price is this. All right, so let's go 0 0.00328. 0 0.00328 multiplied by 150 billion because that's the amount of coins that are on the market. 150, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. You have a $492 million market cap. Call it half a billion dollar market cap already for this project here. And there is still 80% of the coins to come out? Come on, that's crazy. So this is right here, that's what I'm looking at. That's the stuff that's released. They still have 300 billion plus 300 billion. They still have 600 billion locked up. So if, whatever that is on the maths, there's still a vast majority locked up. So if you did a fully diluted market cap, 328 multiplied by 750, billion, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, fully diluted 200, oh, sorry, $2.5 billion market cap. Now, what is the market cap of Chili's? Chili's is the highest sort of, you know, there's NFT space and Chili's was around 4 billion last I looked. There it is, 3.6 billion. So I'd fully diluted this company, which no one's ever heard of, is very, very much close to Chili's which has just gone absolutely nuts. So that is what I look at for the tokenomics, the token metrics of the cryptocurrency. You wanna look at the token distribution, you wanna understand how much uh, the, the initial coin offering went for, so that you know how much did these people that got into the market pay. They were looking at a $10 million market cap, and now the market cap is around 500 billion. So the X's, 10 to 500, about a 50x already, all right, approximately. That's huge, that's very, very big, and it's a very big priced project already. So they're the things I need to take into consideration before I think about investing into something. Now, as you could see from a lot of these little projects that we're looking at, apart from Reef, which is now sitting at 500 million, uh, a lot of them are under that $500 million market cap because we wanna try and get the biggest gains possible. Now I did say I was gonna have a look at uh, some of the charts and this has been a bit light on for the charts and I hit another 30 minute video. You guys are getting a lot of value today. <laughs> All right, Litecoin is at 0 0.0036. It is not reacting to this PayPal news, this Mimblewimble news. It's just not getting there, right? And we really, really, really wanna see it get there. Um, so look, it's, it's not doing it, but I think at some point, some point we're going to get to that that marker way up here which we've been looking at for a while but it's just not looking as sweet as um, some of these other projects so if we start it from around there look two three hundred percent that's what it is that's that's the return on our bitcoin so we'll go into that in a little bit more i think we've gone far enough in today's video litecoin will probably take off at some point like it always does but then it basically comes all the way back down so that's where we're going to make the gains from litecoin Last thing I'll leave you on is the Investor Accelerator. You guys have possibly seen it. Some of you have, some of you haven't. Um, this is the website here, which should load like that. And yeah, if you guys wanna get in on the discount, just scroll down a little bit further and you'll see the place just to type in your email address. There it is. And then you'll get the discount code there. Some of you asked about that. Once you've done that, you can come across, this is all of the content that you will receive. It's about charting and market sentiment and how to piece it all together to do what we do on the channel with the charts. And we are adding more and more and more uh, every single sort of every two months or so to add more courses to the Investor Accelerator. Because the whole idea is to take the gains, move them into other asset classes and create that passive income. So that's the whole premise of the channel, not just cryptocurrency holistic view of our finances. That's it. Thank you guys for joining me again on another massive video. I was really planning. I thought I could get this to a 20 minute video. I have to talk about a lot less on the following videos. 
And uh, yeah, look, I really appreciate your time sticking through all that. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the likes, in the comments. Let's get it to 3,000 likes just here. Subscribe, hit the bell notification icon if you haven't already. It really does go a long way to helping out the channel. Nearly hit that 100,000. We're getting there, getting very, very close. So thank you guys, it's very exciting. Instagram, daily Q and A's. I'm trying to answer as many of your questions over there. It's just all in my time. I'm doing that all for free, of course. I really enjoy answering your questions over on Instagram. That's it for today's video. Instagram, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the next video. But until then, have more fun to get more done.